$350 an ounce. That is the spot price for silver. And that's not a joke, as Joe Biden would say. Not a joke. I'll explain in this video as we explore. Yes, it is April Fool's Day, 2024. But the number that I just gave you is the real price of silver that you think it should be. I just posted a community tab poll and I wanted to get and gauge on what my viewers thought the price of silver should be. Now, it was all over the place, but the vast majority, 54% out of 2,000 votes, think that the price of silver should be well north of $45 an ounce. I stopped there. I, you know, I kind of wanted to get an idea of what people thought, but people were not shy in the comments section about where they think the price of silver should be. Given that... I wish I would have done this poll over again because the categories were under $20, between $21 and $25, between $26 and $35, between $36 and $45, and then over $45. So the, the next highest category was between $26 and $35, which is where I would have felt, where I would have uh, polled if I was partaking in it. But the vast majority of you thought it should be well north of 45 in fact, well north of $100. The most popular comment that was liked the most said $3,350 is, is fair if gold is $2,300, especially if you understand the true value of silver. And that's just it. Understanding value compared to price is something that uh, should be considered here. But can you put a price on value? I would make the argument that you really can't. But I think most of us feel that silver is undervalued. But many of us have been saying this for years. Uh, and so what does it mean? What should the price of silver really be? Um, and I think that most of us feel that it should be much higher. In fact, most of us here, uh, only 10% think it's un it's overvalued. Uh, and the vast majority think it's, 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 it's undervalued. Now, I still have a lot of work to do on this channel to try to uh, help people understand and provide a balanced view on where the price of silver should be. Because I think, in a way, I can understand the sentiment of why silver's price should be higher than where it is now. In fact, again, I share those sentiments, but only to a certain degree. Because the vast majority feel that uh, it is undervalued for two reasons. Number one, the mining ratio or prior fixed ratios between silver and gold. But when you think about the fixed ratio from silver and gold, which was around 15 to 1 and 20 to 1 and, and a couple of other times throughout history where you would see that kind of fixed ratio that has um, been out there when we were on a gold standard, that is, in a sense, manipulation. Uh, and it's manipulation to another degree uh, because the mining ratio is about between 7 and 9 to 1. But when you fix that ratio, uh, you are kind of looking back in a snapshot of time as to where uh, the price of silver compared to gold uh, made sense for a, a large part of the history where gold and silver were used as money. Well, we are no longer in those days and haven't been for quite some time. And we're letting, really, in a sense, nat natural market forces take over. But also, when, when you think about it, um, the price discovery of these metals is based off the supply-demand fundamentals in myriad of different uh, avenues. You know, uh, gold is much more rare than silver. Um, and that is somewhat of a controversial statement for some, especially those who have uh, fallen prey, I feel, to some uh, influencers that say that gold and silver should be at, at a one-to-one -one ratio. That only happened for a brief amount of time in history in a very small region in the Middle East, in fact, mainly in Egypt, uh, where you saw gold to silver at a one-to-one -one ratio. And that has not happened since then, but a lot more silver has been discovered especially uh, throughout the course of history with the mining of gold and silver really taking off from around 1900. If you take a look at some charts, 
of, of, of mined gold and silver during those periods. Both metals have really taken off in terms of mining during that time. The gold rush uh, certainly participated in that, but the Yukon gold, and but also the silver that has been discovered in Nevada and the Comstock load and all these other discoveries that we have seen, not only there, but around the entire globe, uh, has created a huge, vast amount of silver and gold that has been created since before 1900. And therefore, throwing everything off because of supply demand fundamentals. Uh, and so, therefore, I don't think we can use the fixed ratios as a guide. And also, we should not use mining ratios either. Why? Well, because the mining ratios are mutually exclusive from the, uh, the market ratios. And I'll tell you why. Because when you think about supply and demand fundamentals and how much silver has been pulled out of the ground and how much of it is being used and also recycled, then that throws it off. There's a lot of silver that is used and goes through the channels of the supply chain, not only from mining and refining, but also from recycling. We're seeing it more and more these days. And we also have the understanding that with supply and demand, fundamentals play a huge role and pivotal role when you see a metal that is much more rare than uh, gold, for instance, that's platinum. And to also palladium. Both of those are much further, uh, worth much less, according to the markets, than, than gold. Uh, and they are about 15 times more rare. And so when you think about that, why is platinum not higher? Is there other things that are going on in the platinum market, that, such as manipulation or suppression? Not many people talk about that. And again, I'm not discounting manipulation. We know it happens in all commodities, no question about it. In fact, some people make the argument that the recent spike in cocoa prices uh, leads to the credence of some sort of suppressive nature going on. The very mere existence of exchange-traded products and ETFs in the derivatives market is a suppressive force, but it can also be a force that can artificially pump up the price of a commodity as well. I think we're seeing that right now with Bitcoin. The ETFs are actually pumping up the price. And so don't discount that fact in reality as well. All of those things being considered, you know, uh, where should silver's price be? Um, I think it should be higher based off of what we've seen in history, especially in the history of the last 30, 40, 50 years, maybe even, of the gold to silver ratio. Uh, will that change? I don't know. Um, I think that the market is much different than it was 40, 50 years ago, especially with the advent of the SLV, other ETFs and ETPs, and in terms of the, uh, the derivatives market, but also the amount of silver that is being used in industry. Uh, silver is, is the most uh, reflective metal. It has the most uh, amazing properties. So it's got a diverse demand structure and diversity in the metal itself is quite uh, intriguing. And pe many people make the argument that that very fact is why it's suppressed. Because if the price were to rise, that means that the cost of goods, goods and services uh, would be much more expensive. It would not be able to provide for the, for the industry and companies to be able to profit from using silver. But I think that silver being just one of many components and other materials uh, in the market means that I think that the price of silver could literally double uh, where it would have not as great an impact on the overall market for the uh, use of these metals than, than, than it is now. I don't think it is gonna have as big an impact if the price were to rise as many people think. That includes, by the way, the price that you and I pay for silver uh, in the end uh, because of the amount of silver that is used in any given product at any given time. So keep that in mind, folks. Uh, and, and I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I think we have to come to realize, you know, hey, what kind of role does suppression play? Uh, I don't know. We've seen, and I've documented very thoroughly on this channel, the manipulation that uh, that J.P. Morgan uh, took part in and was found guilty of. And the, the precious metals trading desk essentially was dissolved in its in its form at the time. Everybody was found guilty and are now serving 
time in prison for their crimes and, and fines that they need to pay. So uh, there is that. So, but that, that kind of manipulation was as much to the upside as it was to the downside. In other words, this is the type of manipulation that involves for selfish gain for profit. I don't think there is enough uh, of, of a cabal or a collaborative measure or, a, or essentially an, a motive for everybody to work together to keep the price of silver down other than the mere existence of the, uh, of the, of the derivatives and what they do as part of cent essentially the natural market. Now, what other entity could suppress the price of silver that we know and has been proven to be the case? I think that is the mere existence of and what the purpose of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is in the business, indeed, of suppressing a lot of things, for sure, including the value of this, the dollar. And sometimes inflation of the dollar, which means that it's losing value year over year, is something that is going to have an impact on silver. Eventually, silver is going to catch up and, be, and, and do what it has done for thousands of years and essentially maintain a stable store of value. Uh, but we also have to understand that it's, uh, it's got a lot of other things that are complexity to the market. And the strength of the dollar is as such that it is keeping the price of silver down um, as measured in dollars. Uh, because as the Federal Reserve continues to do what they are doing, raising interest rates or holding them where they are at now, at least as of the recording of this video, I don't think we're going to see silver really, really break out and go to, especially the numbers that some people think, $350 an ounce, $100 plus an ounce, north of $100, you know, and uh, it, it's just interesting. It'd be fascinating. I think if we were to see that, those kind of numbers, I think we'd be in serious trouble um, in this country um, for a number of other reasons. So, uh, but it is fascinating to see what your opinion is. Um, and so I would very, be very curious if you are one of those that check that box for over $45 an ounce and think it should be hundreds of dollars and maybe even $350. Uh, I'd love to know some of the other reasons why uh, you think that could possibly be the case. But very interesting. And, uh, and I'm, I want to thank everybody who partook in that poll um, and it is still open if you want to if you want to check it out on the community tab. But let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I think silver is undervalued, but I, I wouldn't go as far as saying it should be hundreds of dollars an ounce. But uh, very interesting indeed. So let me know what your thoughts are. I hope you found this video informative, insightful here on this April Fool's Day. And I want to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment. And subscribe.